the Nigerian authorities have taken steps to counter the French ambassador who refused to leave their country after the 48 hours ultimatum expired. These steps include stripping him and his family of all diplomatic privileges in Niger. They've also cancelled their visas. He's become persona non grata. The authorities have also directed the police to look for him and expel him from Niger Republic. That means the police will be laying siege in front of their embassy. Anytime he steps out, they will arrest him because he no longer has immunity. They will move him straight to the airport to deport him. Yes, this is called reasserting your authority in your own country. Only France refused to evacuate their embassy. All the other countries, including those that were not even expelled from Niger, all evacuated. The Chinese have moved their citizens out of Niger. The Germans, United States, many of them have evacuated from Niger because the atmosphere is unpredictable. No one knows if the ECOWAS invasion is imminent, so it's better to just evacuate early and watch by the sides. But Macron is defiant. He's refusing to evacuate the embassy. Macron is boasting that his ambassador will not leave Niger Republic, despite being declared persona non grata. He also said that they do not recognize the military authorities as the legitimate power in Niger Republic. This leads to one question. Why is it only France that is maintaining this ground? Why is it only France that is questioning the legitimacy of the military authorities? It has become a revolution. You can no longer be referring to this as a military coup. That ship has sailed. It is time for people to stop asking why military coups have become rampant the past three years in Francophone countries. Isn't it time we started asking why democracy has failed the people? Yes, that's the real question. If operators in a democracy obey all the rules, there won't be strife, there won't be agitation, there will never be a military coup. But the reverse is the case, there is no dividend of democracy whatsoever. What we witness are stealings, corruption, all sorts of impunity. They want to lord it over people just because they are elected. Elected in quotes because many of them didn't even win elections. They rigged themselves into power. Some people overstayed their tenures. They permitted tenures that they are supposed to stay in office. They manipulated their constitutions to extend their tenures. That's why you see many leaders spending years in office as if they are in a monarchy. As if the country is theirs, is their empire. You see the Nasimbes in Togo. You see their Libongos in Gabon. You see the Bias in Cameroon. In all these countries, they have one thing in common. They say they are practicing a democracy, but that's not the case. The democracy belongs to one family. The power revolves in one family. It never moves out. So let them give it the right name. It is a monarchy they are practicing, not democracy. Look at Paul Bia, he spends most of his time in Paris. Instead of being in Cameroon where he's the president, one will even think he permanently lives in France instead of Cameroon. Look at Ali Bongo and all the billions the police have seized since the coup happened. What are they doing with all the money? They are laundering the money to Europe and other Western countries to go and develop their own economy while their people suffer. No military man, no patriotic military man will see this and not seize power from politicians. Because that's the only way to stop them. The only other way that citizens can stop a politician is by going to vote them out on election day. But when the results are already known before you even reach the polling unit to cast your vote, then there's no other option. That's why most of them spent decades in power without anything to show for it. You can't remove them through the ballot like it is permitted under a democracy. So it's no longer a democracy. They've hijacked all the state institutions from the police, the army, the justice department, the judiciary, everything. They've hijacked them. So it's only a revolution that can stop them. It happened in many Western countries. Even France experienced a lot of revolutions in their history. So military coups and revolutions are a result of the failure of democracy. Although the one that happened in Gabon, people of Gabon should not rejoice yet. We'll make a separate video because a lot of things that are going on that are people are not aware. More details in that video. This brings us to the new ultimatum Tinubu gave to the Nigerian authorities. He told them to organize themselves and return to democracy under nine months. Hmm. <laughs> 
That's even less than half of the three years the military authorities are proposing. And according to the VOA, it is a suggestion, but it's a start. Who knows? Maybe they can reach a compromise and come to the middle. It's all part of the negotiations. His suggestion also shows that they are now moving away from military intervention. If they eventually agree on a timeline for the transition, it means all parties will work towards the implementation, not making threats at someone in his own sovereign country. One more question is, is he speaking as the ECOWAS chairman or as Tinubu on his personal capacity? Because this comes back to all the analysis we've been making all along. If he can say this without consulting his fellow ECOWAS leaders, that means he knows that whatever he tables before them, they will accept, he can convince them. So let him use that power he has to convince every member of ECOWAS that negotiations and diplomacy is the right way to go. No one needs to invade anybody because of a military coup. In many ECOWAS countries, they have many challenges to deal with. Let them deal with that instead of wasting time mobilizing, trying to threaten or invade Niger Republic. Niger is a sovereign country. Let them deal with the problems themselves. If they now call for help, people will willingly go and help them. But to invade them forcefully, that should not even be one of the considerations. This new proposal from Tinubu also shows that reality has dawned on him. From giving the Nigerian military one week ultimatum to return Bazoum to power, to giving them nine months to form a transition program to return to democracy. So it shows that it is clearer to him now that you don't use force for everything. You don't threaten a sovereign country just because of a military coup. Just because you feel, ha, ah, is it not Niger we give aid to? We always give the nations, arms, everything to them. We are more powerful, this, that, this, that. That's not how it works in reality. On the other hand, Brigadier General Chiani will see this as a win. Because imagine being under pressure from ECOWAS leaders. Imagine sleeping with one eye closed and thinking, hey, we don't know when they will invade. How are we going to do this? How are we going to fight? How can we defend this country? From all that to an offer, to form a transition program under nine months. So there's no doubt that this is a win for them, although they might demand more time because if they truly want to remove their country from the French influence, their influence on their economy, on everything, even the military, if they want to achieve all this, they will need more time to do that. This is assuming that they came to power to actually chart a new path for the country. If they don't do it now, that means a military coup might still happen in the near future. This is because apart from all the reasons they gave for coming to power, there's one that people don't talk much about. The fact that the former president Bazoum wanted to sack Abudraman Chiani before he moved and removed him from power. So if Chiani executed a military coup out of selfish interest, that means he might not achieve much. Nigerians will be better off electing a true patriot as their president, who will get a better deal for the people of Niger, who will remove the French influence over their country, who will harness all the natural resources and develop Niger into a world-class country. This is not the dream of Nigerians alone, it is the dream of many Africans where you find many natural resources, but people are still poor. Look at Gabon. They have oil, they have iron, they have gold, they have copper, many things. They should be the Singapore of Africa. But no, they rather steal the money than develop their country. If the military authorities in Niger truly want to reduce the influence of France in their country, they need more time to do that. In fact, they must accomplish it before handing over to the civilians. Because the civilian government in a democracy can't do this. They were the ones that signed the unfavorable agreements with France in the first place. And if you look at the pattern, fellow Francophone countries, they've all chased France away. Burkina Faso, Mali. So it's only a military regime that can achieve that in Niger Republic. France is aware of this, that's why their military spokesman is threatening the Nigerian authorities that they will use force in any case that the ambassador is arrested or they try to invade their military base or the embassy. 
that the French military based in Niger will react in a forceful manner to save themselves. This is exactly what the French want, going by what Emmanuel Macron has been saying all along, that they don't recognize the authority in Niger. They are looking for an excuse for military intervention. And since ECOWAS leaders are no longer forthcoming, they've seen the opposition in ECOWAS region that no one wants to invade Niger in any guise. France is looking to do it alone. They don't want to live quietly. This is where the African Union needs to come in. They need to tell France to leave Niger Republic in peace. They don't want you. They say you should leave their country, but you are insisting you must stay in another man's country. They are doing this because they know that a civilian government in Niger will never be able to chase them away. That they must find a way to negotiate and force their hand to continue staying in the country. So what it means now is that France might be a stumbling block in achieving peace in Niger Republic. The military authorities have agreed to conduct a transition program back to democracy. The time frame is still under negotiations between them and the ECOWAS leaders. But they are most likely to say that France must leave their country before they can return to democracy. So let's see how the negotiation goes in the next few days. Thanks for watching.